So then, welcome to part two of the DCC chip decoder installation. installation. Uh, in this part of the video, we're hopefully, if all of this wiring that we did in the previous video works, we're hopefully going to be programming the train and getting it running around our little layout here. You can see Tony over there in the little manhole. Um, so hopefully we'll get it running around this. He's just doing some some work on a platform idea Lighting and at things. the minute. See if we can get some lights on a platform and just... We're kind of doing initial tests on a lot of stuff, aren't we? Yeah. Before anything gets gets permanent, but this is one of our main goals, is getting the Scotsman on the line. So we'll probably cut it here and head over to the software and show you how to program a custom fitted DCC chip. Okay, so here we are, we're in the software portion of the setup now. Uh, the only reason I wanted to just quickly adjust that camera angle is you want this button up here. This is set up a locomotive. So you want to click on that and wait for that to load up. This is with your train on the programming track ready to be read by the software. Parts of this do go a little bit slow, so I will just speed them up. You won't be missing anything, don't worry. I'll make sure you get all the information you could possibly need. So you're going to go down to this little icon here, which is the I, it's locomotive settings. Click on that and wait for that one to load. Just to make sure we're reading every possible thing this chip can offer, you want to change this setting up here, the CV's range to read. To one to two five five. Now two five five is, I believe, the maximum number of CV settings that is on a particular chip. So that'll read every single thing this chip has to offer and gives it for the best, uh, the best possible programming. So we're going to hit this tick here and get the CVs. We haven't specified what locos on the track yet. We're going to do that in a little bit. We just want the chip to pick up and hopefully our connections have worked. So it's essentially that it's probably going to take around 25 minutes, 25 and a half minutes. So this part of the video will probably be sped up or we'll just cut the weight out. And there we go, it's reading. So it's trying to identify if there is a decoder chip there. That's a fantastic sign. And it's found it just here. R8249 four function decoder. It's absolutely fantastic. It means that we know our connections have worked. It is picking up the chip, it's detecting something there. Now we just need to hope that we'll be able to move the train. So there we go, as far as I can tell it has finished the scan, it went a, a lot quicker than 25 minutes, it, w it wasn't even 5 minutes. It seems to have picked up a lot of CV values and detected that there is a chip there, There's nothing way down this bottom end of the list. So what we're going to do now is we're going to assign a number to this loco, so you can see just here you've got the amount of locos that you've got registered and set up at the side of your screen so you can pick and choose which locos are doing what on your layout. We've got one set up on port three already. We've so got one set up. Yeah, we've got a Virgin Pendolino set up on port three. Oh no, sorry. No, we've got a GWR oh. set up on port 3. We've got a Virgin Pendolino set up on port 2. So I'm probably going to assign this to port 4. 
So you want to click this little icon down here, which is right four digit loco address. You want to click on that and just click the tick to get rid of that box. I'm going to choose our local ID. So we're going to go for 0004 for this train. Going to hit the tick. And we want to change this. This on the primary address value to 004 because we want port 4. So that'll turn green. That means it needs to be written. And now we're just going to hit the right button down here and hopefully that will assign the value of four to the Flying Scotsman. So I was just double checking there that everything's been written out and everything's fine. It's still showing up as a value four, which is brill. So we're gonna hit the red X down here. Now what we wanna do is go to locomotive DCC ID. We're gonna find number four, because that's what we've just registered. And we're going to find the name of the train. Shouldn't be too difficult. So I'll just type in flying there. Okay, these are our search results for flying. That's all we typed in, and naturally it's come up with the Flying Scotsman. We're gonna go for this one just here. <clears throat> so we've selected the local value, and we found, um, we found the name of the loco. So the detection ID, our only one that comes up is three. And I'm not too sure why. I have seen a few other tutorials doing this uh, and there are lots of different options up there. But this method seemed to work when we were connecting the GWR, uh, the GWR train. So we're just going to go with this value. And we're gonna go to this one here, the little train icon down at the bottom next to the eye that says change current local ID. The only reason we're clicking on that is to just double check that it's at locomotive DCC ID 0004. So that's fine. That's okay. We will sort out the cruising speed and the shunting speed at a later date. Right now we just want to make sure that the train actually moves. So after we do all that, we go down here and we click Save Loco Details. So you see that's popped up right there. And now we can hit the X and it's added our Loco just there. So we're gonna get power reconnected to the track now. We'll get the Scotsman on there. We'll put the cover back on the tender to cover up all the motor and the uh, the electric wiring there and we'll catch up with you when we've got it running so then guys we should have the working Scotsman uh, bear in mind it is the tender driven one it's the very old one and the last time it had any repairs or anything done to it it had its traction tires changed however after it had been worked on uh, it was put into storage, so we will be adding a couple more traction tyres uh, But for now the moment of truth does the DCC chip work? And there she goes There you go, you can tell that that's the traction tyres. Yeah, absolutely but The most important thing is it works. It runs. We, we have, have officially converted a non-DCC train to full DCC capability. And that's it. Loaded up just there. We hit that button. Off she goes. 
absolutely fantastic. So we hope you enjoyed our little tutorial. Uh, we hope to be bringing you more along the line. I think possibly the next one, because we've had the track pins show up now, uh, we're going to fit, well, we're going to pin in those points over there. Yep, we're going to be pinning in point just there, and for the siding there. And then we'll show you how to wire up one of these for an inshall frog point, which an inshall frog is... Where the frog is plastic. So don't worry, there's only three cables that need it. And uh, yeah, we'll show you how to do that one next time. So if you enjoyed the video, or if it was helpful anyway, please let us know down in the comments section. Um, links to the step-by-step -step guide that we were using for fitting and wiring the DCC chip are going to be down in the description of part one and part two. Along with a handwritten guide uh, by ourselves for programming it in Railmaster. This is the latest version of Railmaster. Uh, a lot of tutorials out there for a slightly outdated version, but the premise is still the same. And we've modified anything that needed modifying. So yeah, once again, hope you enjoyed and hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.